Hello everyone. Right, just give me one minute. We're gonna reposition ourselves. This is gonna look like we've been on a roller coaster for the first five seconds, and then you're gonna see a lot of my hair. Uh, I have not gone swimming today, so you're not getting my usual washed look. You're getting pure dry um, to the bone. Why not? As they say, um, I'm just trying to find my video. Guy, when I can't even find it. Oh my goodness me, it will be nearly done with my hair in a minute, slash shoulder, slash arm. Um, oh, hello Sandy, one second please. Okay, right, um, uh, uh, so it's hard to read something real quick. Okay. Right. Well, hello, Raquel and Tash, and to anyone who is over on the tube. Right, here we go. So, um, just a lovely reminder that. Uh, this video is streaming both in Facebook and YouTube so depending on what one of your device likes you can hop over to either one uh, doesn't really matter I see your comments on both ends um, and I promise that I try and get to them right so we are on oh, hello D from Thailand oh my gosh I hope you're having an excellent hello hello Di um, so we are on our last page tonight like look at this last page in our orange book and tonight for our products that we're going to use we do have to decide on a rice paper and stencil but the first one we're definitely about is the stamp so this is our new stamp it's called swoosh uh, mum and I had a bit of a contention about what we could call it um, I said splash she said swoosh and on the label it and on the back it says swoosh so I'm guessing my mum won because um, you know is what it is but yeah look at that it's a nice little swoosh so that's our stamp that we are definitely using tonight the bit that is contentious is the rice paper because we've got a few and the stencils we'll start with the stencils because there's only two yeah. so um we've got the our new border stencil that is called circle lines not circles on sticks um, another one of my great naming suggestions. I'm not allowed to name product, by the way. Hello, Ronnie Robin. I am not allowed to name product. I draw the drawings, do the reels, the shorts, stories, and a few, and manufacture most of the product. But I'm not allowed to name things because I'm not very good at it. So, um, yes, rely on everyone else for that one. But uh, so we've got circle lines circles and sticks circle lines and then we've got a bigger version of our swoosh stamp oh okay that's all good d so um i don't know you guys have to decide which one you want out of these for me to use tonight as i'm pretty happy with either one i drew both of them so you know it's up to you guys uh, on what one you would like. But maybe let's see the rice papers before you make your mind up on the stencils as well. Because we also are going to use one rice paper as well. So we're going to have a stamp, a rice paper, and a stencil. So we've got this one here. We've gone with the black and white theme because I thought it would be cool to come back and use our Art by Marlene Neons. Um, or some Montmartre Neon paint. Up to you guys. It's the the circle border one's really cute, isn't it? So we've got that one, but let's have a look at the rice papers, and you guys can decide. So we've got this one here, which is quite light. We've also got the geometric one, I think you could call it. This is all these rice papers are under our Artful Elements range. Um, it's going to be kind of like a continuous range that we add to as I come up with more patterns. And all of that type of stuff it's just you know for the sketchy stuff and abstract and all of that that we make and there's another one and then here's this one 
Uh, just as a little fun fact, the stencil for tonight was actually supposed to be this pattern here, but my stencil idea had too many overlappies, so I'm going to go back in and fix that. So that's probably going to be in a few weeks' time. Depends if I remember to fix it before Monday. Oh, hello, Gail, and hello, Pam. And this is our last one here with the leaves. So, you know, so I did draw all of these. Half of them are my own main brushes. So, like, this one here, this fern, and these circles here are my brush. Uh, the leaves I drew by hand. Um... I made this shape here, but I didn't put it into a brush because I couldn't be bothered. The scales are my brush. And I feel like there was another one that had my brush in it, but I can't one of my brushes in it. I'm currently making my own Procreate brushes because it's just easier with design work. So, um, you guys probably didn't need to know that, but you know. Yeah. Um, oh, hello, Cheryl. So, which one are you thinking about using? Uh, we do already have the swoosh as our stamp for the night so I don't know if you guys want an even bigger swoosh we could probably leave that one there for maybe a page or something mum said we could make it like a butterfly or something like that but yeah so we might stay away from the big swoosh I do like it I would use this coming out of photos and stuff you know like you have your photo there and like it looks like a wing or a splash if you do it on the corner which is why it's called swoosh because you can have multiple things um and then but I think we're gonna stick with the border because yeah so we're gonna have the stamp border and then let's have a look at so which rice paper did you guys love the most I I like all of them very much equally because I drew them all however this one was a pain so you yeah. know Mermaid scales. Who would have thought it? Like, hmm, what are we thinking? I do think that tonight's going to be a very simple page. Just a heads up. Very simple. Welcome to Artful Elements. Um, and yeah. So let's see. Uh, which one were we thinking of? Maybe. Uh, I just had a bit of an idea, but I'm not sure it's going to work. It's probably going to be working best if we use one of the lighter ones. So we'll have to leave the two dark ones out. The light one. You reckon this one? This one or this one will make the thing that I have coming out of my head right now work really well. So, what's well, going into my head? Maybe we use the cube one with the cubes. You reckon the cube one? Oh, okay. And what else got any suggestions? We're about to do the cube one. Okay. We will go with the cube. Just trying to think now. Yeah. Actually, guys, what you wanted? You want the cubes? We will go with the cubes, although. I'm just trying to think. This doesn't have much contrast. So the idea that I've got in my head. Probably won't work as well with this one. I will fully admit to that. Because we're going to use fluoros. So we already want our rice paper to be quite dark. To balance out how bright our fluoros are going to be. So if we use this. I'm going to need to find where I put my black paint. And I probably shouldn't paint with black today. I'll be fully honest with you. Headspace is a bit low um so we might use this one in another class die i'll do like a mini short tag or something with it i promise use it in another one okay and let's use this bad boy this one this one here will work the best i think this one here will 
yes, it will definitely work the best with what we're coming with. Trust me. I will make little mini projects with the other ones and make sure I make like a short video of each and all the rest of it. Um, when I get to creating, I hadn't cre I haven't created the last few weeks on a Sunday properly yet. I've been trying to um, really get into like working out shadows and stuff like that because I've got an idea for an artwork. It's just taking longer than what I would like. Okay, let's get out the fluoros. I know I kind of did, um, like the opposite of what I said I was going to do, like going with your inquiries, but I'm telling you, this will work the best. Okay, so now we've got our fluoros, and we want bright ones. So let's go with, what colours have we been using a lot of? Pink, blue. Oh, actually, we've been pretty, been pretty even Stevens. Oh, we need our tag. Before we forget, this is our last tag for the tag book. I have so many tags to finish. Uh, I think I've got now about five left to go. So, you know, I'm like halfway. Well, that's what I'm going to tell myself anyway. Okay, so we've got these ones. Yeah, and we're going to stick our tag on after we get our rice paper on. But to get our rice paper on, what we're going to do first is, is we're going to crop it. We're going to pre-crop before we even stick it on and that's because it's going to go over the whole page so to pre-crop it we're just going to grab our paintbrush and wet it i've got a round edge paintbrush this is my favorite one it's a good size i like the size of it that's why it's my favorite um it's not too big so it means that my heavy handedness never really becomes a problem when i use it um when it, for average painting and it's just the right size to wet the edge of rice paper. Um, for any of you who live south of Gladstone currently, you could actually probably wet all four sides of your rice paper and then rip it all at once and it won't dry. We are in the season of cold. Although it has been hot during the day in Gladstone currently. So we're just coming in. We're going to do this all around and we want it just about a mil in from the edge. The reason for that just gives us some breathing room when we stick it down, obviously. Um, we don't want to have to come in with scissors afterwards and look. Okay. Um, these products that I am using tonight, the new ones and the bundle, won't be up and uh well most of them won't be up until after class just because mum's currently just editing the photos yeah just we're in the middle of making a fair bit of product so yeah it's a busy time we're officially in the middle of the year so it's all hands on deck no time to waste them. All right, there we go. So we've got a bit left over, and we're going to probably use it to do some layering in a minute. But that there is what we've decided to have left. So you could have gone fully for the top or anything like that. It just depends what you wanted to cut out. I cut out a little bit of the flicks on the side and a bit up the top. Not much over this side because I did like the border here. So... There we go. And we're just going to lift that one up. And then we're going to come in with our metallics. Now we want bright colours, but colours that are going to mix well. So if we have orange, we're not going to put green on because that won't work. So let's just make up what could possibly work if we wanted to. And yellow can go in between those. There, but, mm, no. I think, oh, that's a metallic, so that's <laughs> iron, isn't it? When was the last time I used green? 
Oh, a long time ago. Back there. Damn me. No. Right, we're going to go with yellow, orange, and red. Come back in with any yellow colors that we need during the process. Hello, Karen. I'm just trying to think what will be brightest. This technique works well when we use fluoros that are really bright. There are just some colors that aren't quite bright uh, when they're fluoros still. Um, I call them like a medium. Because I still have a very dark grey tint, and that's what the blue is, and the green, they have um, a dark grey tint to them, um, well, grey opacity to them, I think, is what, they have a lot of grey in them, it's the best I can do. They're not as light as the other ones. So we're just coming in, and we've got a fair amount on there, as you can see. Then we're going to come do with our large paintbrush we're not going to wet it that's very important we do not want to wet our page at this point at all we just want the paint on there which I know is wet so you're wetting the page but not like adding any water at all this is a dry brush moment I just need a bit more because this is drying a lot quicker than I thought it would. And as you would have seen just then, I did start with the lighter colour first and then I worked my way to the darkest colour, which was red. So I went yellow, orange, red. Well, it's called red. But I definitely think it's a pink. Oh, no, it looks red through the camera. It just looks pink here from underneath the light. Before it dries fully, then what we're going to come and do stick this down while it's still wet. Okay, and we want that color to come through. See how that color's coming through? And that's because we left the paints pure and we didn't put any water on them. So they're able to come through. And this is why we wanted that contrast. Go and the more you rub it, so you are going to rip it in some areas. Like I've ripped the orange there, but that's the rice paper there in the orange section, but that's okay. Some of these areas I just need a little bit more. So you put a little bit on top, but we wanted to get most of it underneath the rice paper because what the rice paper does is it calms it down. It brings it back at home by just muting it just a little bit between the um, inking printing layers. And even as we put this yellow over top now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to, yes, rub it out with our brush, but then come and apply the same hand techniques we were doing when we stuck the rice paper down originally. And really get along that edge there, make sure we've got no air bubbles, and if we do, we rub off the excess. As air bubbles are not our friends. Oh, see, we've got that big patch there that doesn't have anything, so let's come in with a little bit of orange.
Oh, that's okay, Bronnie. If you don't like paint on that part there, what you can do is, is you can come in and you can put a piece of paper towel, paper towel down for that bit and then rub through the paper towel. Or a pair of gloves, either option. So yeah, if you don't like painting your hands, you can put like a cover between you on the rice paper, like a piece of paper towel. You could put gloves on. Um, I'm not really supposed to get paint on my hands. It's an occupational hazard. So there we go. So there's layer one. And what do you think of that? This is why we needed the contrast. See the black just makes it look so good. Look at that. Oh, I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to lie with you. All right, now we're going to come and stick it down. Uh, well, we're not actually going to stick this one down. We're just going to hold it down as we put our stencil over top. And I think we're only going to put one of these border stencils down. And then put it on once because we're, we're going to remember we're only working on, on an A5 piece here. So it's very small. So we don't really have room to do that stencil three times on this piece of paper. On the piece we're working on. So you know like without it becoming really claustrophobic and very chaotic where we want this one to be quite calm because we've already got lots of bright colour on there. So you know if we were to put it three times it might just be a bit just a little bit too much. And that's saying something coming from me. The brilliance of fluoros. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna have my hands for work tomorrow. Be all right. I'm working in an art store, and I work remotely from my other employer, so we're all good. I did remember one time when I was working in Brisbane in the office for my employer that I work remotely for, and I rocked up with bright blue hands only once, and uh, my boss was not very happy. He, he looked once at them and did remind me that I had to look professional at work and that paint bright blue hands wasn't really professional. So, you know. Which was fair enough. It is his place of business, so, you know. There we go, and now... We're just rubbing the excess of that white paint on there. We powered, we did power knife the paint on because fluoros can be quite bright. And um, if we sponged it on, it would have actually gone through the white paint and keep coming on top because that's the brilliance of fluoros. It actually goes over top of the paint. Like it, it resists. It goes through the layers constantly, which is because they are so bright. They just keep going through the layers. So... That's why we palleted it on, so then it was too thick for the fluoro paint to go through it. And we're just lifting that up. So we've got our bit there, like so. Or we could come put that back down again, and we're going to do some stamping now, I reckon. You over there? Yeah, we were there. Right, and we're just going to move that one up. Top. Like I said, we're only going to put one on. Exactly. All right. And then let's come and do our stamp. Or actually, I don't want to pick that up. Right. Let's grab our fluoro watercolors. I think this burgundy will match quite lovely. Or might be a bit different, but. Yeah, we'll be okay. We're just going to add another colour. So I'm just going to come in with this burgundy. And hopefully it spreads up and not under. We're going to do a 20 cent discount on the mixed media bundle. So it'll be $13.75 instead of $13.95. Okay. So it's got a A4 rice paper, the border stencil and the stamp. Which rice paper did you use? I used the um, one that you reversed with the sneaky thing in the middle. Right, can I see the barcode strip? 
Yes, I, I kept I it. need the number. I kept the barcode strip. Number oh, five. Yeah. Oh, that means I'm just making the next thing a bundle. We'll have no picture, but I'll put it up. Yeah, I'll put the picture on it once we're finished. Okay. Oh, Dee says hello. hello? Dee. Hi, Dee. All right. Go. Look how cool that is. So that did actually only spread up there. So we're just going to come in. Thicken this up just a little bit. Spread that bottom bit out a bit more. And by having a little bit of the burgundy tinge that we put up here means that it's just a bit more rounded. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to lift it up in a second. Can you see how it's a bit more rounded? I hope so. I'm going to grab a pen in a minute. Pen, 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 pen. Our red pen. I know. I'm really exploring. I've used red multiple times in this art journal. Just coming in and doing, doing a bit of doodling just to get a few more bits and pieces on the page. I'm doing it with this red paint pen. So it matches our colour palette that we chose with the fluoros. It's just also a little bit more easier. If you are doing this at home, I would actually leave the rice paper to fully dry before doing this because you still have the potential of ruining your paint pen through the rice paper being very wet and maybe even leaking some of the paint onto your paint pen tip. Right. And then we just need to add a little bit there, I reckon.
And I think that looks all right. I know you can't really see where they are, but it's good to know that they're there. And by doing, I'm doing most of my strokes either this way, um, landscape way, because then it makes the page seem a bit longer and a bit bigger. It doesn't make it feel so crammed. For more fringe penny flowers after being in Thailand, there are so many here. Right, fringe penny flowers. And we'll put that on the list. Just so then I remember for after class. Right. See? I'm gonna remember now. Okay, and we're gonna come in with some orange. Does this pen work still? Or did I kill it? Like, oh that end's questionable. This end is even more questionable, so that's a nope. Okay. That was purely for my own interest anyway. Right, let's come in and do our stamping. Now what colour do you reckon we should do our stamp in? I do like how the white is by itself, so I don't think it should be white. And I don't think it should be burgundy, because then um, that'll be too dark. We could come in with some fluoro yellow mixed with white. And do it in a few places like a comic book type. Should we think hot pink? Actually, we could do it in hot pink, couldn't we? We could, we could, we could, in fact. What if... Put that one down there. So we've got magenta, and then we've got Pink. Which one do you reckon is going to make a better hot pink? Maybe this one? I also need French pennies after going to Bali. Right, French pennies are on the list. It's just a bit off our colour palette currently, so we're just going to add some of that red in we have used. So this is the colour, oh my goodness me, you can't really see that because of the got fluoro quantities so this is the color that we have got I think that's a nice pink I'm pretty sure it is I'm gonna flick my light on in a minute but I'll show you what the page looks out like without light so it's still very bright it just doesn't it's just the color 20 years ago it was all orchids now it's French pennies oh just look at that something different yeah we might add some flicks of yellow so we're just coming in we're gonna rub it on and we made this color through using the fluoro magenta and red with um, just white gesso and we did that so then the colour wasn't completely different from what we already had on the page because we've already used the fluoro red. And we put white on it because as you can see it wouldn't be very bright without the white already. Let's come in. Add another one in there. I'm trying to do it so then it's coming out. This thing like this. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at those. So we got that one down there. That was our first attempt. And look at that one. I do like. 
just looks yummy. Oh my gosh. Was worth sticking all the little individual pieces down. <laughs> What do you think? Do you reckon we need any more? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit like wary that I'm putting a lot on. Like, mm. reckon we need any more swooshes, Noe? I think it might need a bit more. Like, bit more? To add to its character, I guess. Add to its character. Oh, look at that. Fancy. Some of this technical stuff I'm teaching is rubbing off. You can thank my art teacher at school. Uh -huh, your learning theory. Well, we do have an exam this time. Oh, can keep that all to yourself. Yeah, semiotics. Well, not semiotics. Um, so like a dumbed down version. Yeah, that's called compositional interpretation. Yeah, it's like what is the personal meaning towards this? Oh no, that's symbolism. No, we have like this whole list that we have to go through. Oh, that's because cool. personal stands for something. It's like he is for present. Oh, okay. Is for... Yeah, that's compositional interpretation. We have fun for that. I had to teach him some idiotics last time. He did not appreciate that. And then so we've got that. Okay, Ram. We're just doing it now because I like it. I do think it looks pretty good. Now what we might come and do is I know it's not really clear of where our tag was, kind of. There's a little bit, but not, not 100%. So what we're going to come and do is we're just going to add another layer of that burgundy, but we're not going to go over that swoosh because that swoosh is amazing. I'm just going to make it a bit darker and we're just doing this because to go over fluid paints you do need multiple levels, like a lot of multiple layers. Links through just a little bit. There we go. So that's that one there. Oh, there. Well, that was close. Drop that just a little bit. And then where's this art for elements title on this rice paper here? Let's grab our snippies. Can 
and then chest. Something rub that one. Oh, well, have fun, Dee. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, thank you, Margaret. Over on YouTube. Right, here we go. So we're just coming on. And we're just putting a little bit of white gesso on the back of our rice paper. We put white on the back of it so then it was 100% opaque. We can see it. Just try and bond that bit there by just patting the white over to the bridge of the paper. Oh, look at that. It's nice. Okay, and then we just need some yellow flakes. Like, I know it looks really good already, but I think it just needs some yellow flakes maybe, and then we're good. So we're just going to come and grab a little bit of white. Not too much because we don't want too much flicking. Don't want it to be like flicking a wall. And then just gonna come in and mix. Oh, that's one of my own hairs. Thanks to chlorine damage on my hair. But the pool gives me a better quality of life. Able to live off of steroids. All right, there we go. I will live without steroids. Right. Now we've got a bit of paint on us, so it's a bit more pastely. You can't really see that. Well, once we flick it on, they won't be 100% opaque because we've added water to them, but they will sit on top because they have fluoro paint in them. See? There for thinking. Right, there we go. I know you can't see that from far away, so I'm about to just lift it up and show you. So as you can see, the flicking's there, that's the swoosh. And that's only like a few layers. That's, that's a 45 minute class, goodness me. I know that's quite short, but I hope you like it. I think it looks really nice. It's quite well balanced. Um, I love the new stamp. It was definitely worth the hour it took me to make 20 of them. <laughs> it might have been an hour and a half, actually. I don't know. It was like an hour. It was a lot of sticking involved. Um, maybe so some bright blue. Yeah, I could add bright blue, but then I'll be tempted to add blue patterns and all the rest of it. And it's quite a small page, so I think it looks good as it is. Um, these are also very much my colours. Pink, yellow... Not really the red, but pink and yellow is nearly pink, so the red is up. It's close enough. But yeah, so thank you all for coming. I'm going to go and put this photo of this page up on the Mixed Media Bundle, but all of the products are now live. They are our Artful Elements range. Like I said, we're just going to keep adding to that because it's purely like a collection where I just basically brain dump anything that I've created that doesn't fit anywhere else. Um how it works because you know these are some things that you make and you're like oh 
this doesn't match anything. Well, because it's pure texture. So instead of trying to match it to other brands or other ranges we already have, we up for elements. So yeah, so thank you all for coming. And uh, we are back tomorrow night for Mom's Friday Night Live where she's using Imagine with Alice. And some of our new templates. Templates, isn't that right, Mom? You're using templates tomorrow, aren't you? Right. I don't know if you heard that, but Mum's using the diamond template, Imagine with Alice, and something else that is new. So, yes. Uh, so it should be all very exciting. So thank you all for coming, and we shall see you all tomorrow um, at 7 p.m. for Mum's class on the main Scrap Fantasies Facebook page and on our U main YouTube channel, which is my Mum's. And um, and it's the last day of the financial year, the 30th of June. We can all go to bed, and we'll wake up on Saturday in a new financial year. So thank you all for coming and have a great night. Bye.